Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're taking a look at Oddworld A Soulstorm on the Nintendo Switch, a sequel to the now long running series. I played this one on other platforms, so I'm going to be giving you my opinion generally on the game, and then I'll be breaking down the performance I've seen this far on the Switch. So with that luck, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and let's get started. <laughs> If you are thinking about grabbing this one, then consider using a cornershop.gg for your eShop credit. It's going to be instant delivery via email, and you'll receive 10% off at checkout using code CORNER. Oddworld Soulstorm then it picks off immediately where our prior adventure ended. We saved 300 slaves from Rupture Farms. Unfortunately for us, however, relaxation is far away. Now we're starting a new adventure as Abe, the hero of the people, and we're setting out on a journey to uncover the truth behind the information that's being spread. Additionally, we're saving our people from what seems to be some sort of sickness. Opening the game though, we get a highlight cutscene where we are under attack on a train before flashing back to what led to this moment. It's a decent enough story honestly, definitely action packed, but it does lack much of the charm Oddworld was known for. That's particularly true of the immature sense of humour. It's just not got quite as much personality throughout the game, yet it's still carried by that same lead. Abe feels just a little bit different. <laughs> Before we do get into gameplay then I want to give you an idea of how far I got into the experience. Please understand this video is only based up until that point, but for me in the game I actually got to the point where we are now taking control of the train. That is roughly to give you an idea as well of maybe 4-5 to five hours into the experience, so probably about a third of the way through. Gameplay then, and much like past entries, this one's a 2.5D styled platformer. It has more than a few puzzles and overpowered enemies standing ahead of you. Very much a game of strategically stealthing your way around while using some of Abe's core abilities. Now if you're not good with frustration, I would not recommend any Oddworld entry. They can be brutal and that is very much the case here. Controls are simple enough though, movement, the ability to duck and roll, we can climb up ledges, drop down, we can sprint, we can even double a jump. We also get access to a number of throwable items thanks to what is a quick access wheel. Early examples include flammable liquid, a fire extinguisher and smoke screens to hide in. Typically when a new item is introduced in this game it's going to set an entire level around that very idea. You also then have a special ability that is the chant which allows you to take control of your enemies and use their firepower on their own or well, either that or simply make them explode. We can also save our people as we do progress with the d-pad which gives commands such as asking them to follow you or simply stop. It's an old school game this one and it's relatively simplistic controls definitely reflect that. Levels have some nasty traps ahead of you though, moments where you need to avoid spikes, uh, objects that can crush you, moments where you must acrobatically jump between ladders or security systems that draw in an army of enemies, many of who though will kill you with one hit. Here's the reason I never enjoyed this as much as early entries, it's just taking things too far, the asks are often greater than the responsiveness on offer with the controls, and often it just simply devolves into what is trial and error. It's what we would have basically considered a cinematic styled platformer though back around the originals, which I adored, think the likes of another world, but this, in the wrong type of environment, it can translate to somewhat extended animations and a sense of almost clunkiness for lack of a better word, and that is really how I walked away from this entry. I played it basically thanks to its inclusion with PS Plus at launch. This problem actually extends to your friends as well who you meet along the way and must save. The idea is simple enough, talk to them or cure them of a sickness and then take them to a portal represented by birds in this world that will allow them to escape. With more complex than ever locations though, they just don't have the AI up to the task of overcoming some of the requirements. Frequently they just set off alarms or get themselves into trouble, so for that reason, I only ever saved those that I needed to progress. Think an eight person button press moment. In that situation, I needed to gather up seven of these friendlies and get them to the location. I do want to say here though, look, I don't think it's a bad game. There's highlight moments, moments like a blimp that's chasing you or flying enemies that burn down structures and you can control them. It's big on set pieces generally and that works for me. I think given the narrative, 
It just allows this world to truly show its scale as you would find things like incoming fire or see cinematically a train running away as you climb on board. The most frustrating part about this entry though, it's somewhat related to controls. There's a few moments with snipers that are just brutal and devolve into trial and error. The interaction button, it requires you to be perfectly positioned and that's tough when you're trying to let's say hide from a guard in a locker in a split second. Finally, the big one, they added crafting to Oddworld, which may be one of the worst ideas in my opinion. It's a tough platformer as it is. I wanna feel like I'm moving forward and pretty quickly between those moments a challenge, but instead now I'm searching for pieces to make mines or smoke grenades absolutely not needed. Like sure, hide the items around this world, you know, crates, stuff like that, but a crafting screen, it's just in no way necessary. Overall, then, look, the reason I'm walking away, it's not anything to do with the port. I actually think it's strong work, which we will get to here. I'm just not up to facing the game all over again. I have that kind of once is enough feeling about this game. You know, it's nice to see the characters again. It's an interesting world. It's a shame, though, about the changed personality, which often got me through the frustrating moments. And, you know, in the originals, I always had a smile on my face, no matter how difficult it got. So, yeah, look, overall, for gameplay, I'd say I don't regret playing it, but unlike the originals, it's not a classic that can draw you back in. Honestly, as well, I respect how true it often feels to the original, but perhaps it could have done with a tiny bit of modernization. Performance then, and honestly, from what I've seen, it's never locked, but I'm still impressed. Compared to the original entries, the scale here is huge. They're taking advantage of current hardware, you know, huge enemies, huge locations, but then still on the Switch, they're holding a frame rate that I'd describe as around 30 frames per second. I tend to see from the recording somewhere between 28 to 31, with the occasional slightly lower drop here and there. Other issues from a performance stance, I had a scenario where a cutscene never loaded, a quick restart, though fixed that issue. The load times themselves can be a little on the longer side, and finally, just occasionally I had a very minor stutter, but it definitely impacted my platforming, it always seemed to be mid-jump. Visually then, on the Switch, I'm really happy with what they've done here. Again, this is a much larger game in regards to its presentation with some massive vistas and again, a screen filling enemies. And while you can see the corners cut, such as smoke effects dialed back and even some details in the world have changed, I still think, look, it absolutely captures the artistic intention. Just granted, now we get some pixelation and, of course, lower quality texture work. Does that take away from the world though? Not really, in my opinion. Honestly though, for visuals, I really do think they did a good job of maintaining that quality. All of the animations, the enemies are intact. It's easy to identify what is happening in the world. Cutscenes look absolutely fantastic. And then overall as well, the same goes for handheld. The image is definitely softer, but generally, I think it is very, very solid port work. Audio finally, cutscenes are fully voice acted. It's the usual odd world quality, which means it's absolutely great. It's just strong work throughout with some big personalities. Sadly, again though, the script not quite as good, so they're, I guess they don't have as much to work with at times. Outside of that though, we get a huge amount of sound effects to bring each location to life, and the music, it does a nice job of filling in the rest of the sound field, though I will say regarding the music, it's more what I would describe as atmospheric. Overall then, from what I've seen, this is a solid port of an average reimagining of a classic character and series. It's not that it moves too far away from the formula, it's just they often ask a little too much from what is really possible with the control scheme in place. Also just the animations, the movement, the whole design, it's not really, I guess, in line with what you would expect of a cinematic platformer. Then as well, you know, there's just features that are not necessary, crafting being the big one, which just slows you down constantly. That said though, for fans, I do think it's a game at least worth experiencing, just to maybe temper the expectations a dash and prepare for frustration when the game dials up the difficulty or simply, honestly, becomes at points unfair. The story though, decent enough, right? It just needed more of the trademark humor over anything because the arc itself, again, it is solid. For those that do choose to see it through as well and want an excuse for replayability, it is there thanks to multiple endings. I've personally only ever seen the bad one because the AI frustrated me, so I basically sacrificed everyone and only saved myself. Will you be picking up this one though? Let us know in the comments down below. With that then, like, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and I'll see you all 
on the next video. Thanks everyone.